Passing Lake Kariba, we finally arrived at Mafui International Airport and boarded our fleet of Land Rovers and headed off towards the National Park, stopping on the way at a textile factory for a little light shopping. <laughs> The textiles are all hand-painted and start life as a blank sheet of cotton, where the artists mark out the designs using a mixture of flour and water. After the designs have dried, the dye is applied. What are the dyes made from? This dye is made from uh, pigment paint. Pigment from what? It's from, uh, we have one emulsion, which is the base color, and then you add with a uh, concentrated pigment to make uh, different, those primary colors. Never did get around to explaining what the pigments were made from, but the results were a feast for the eyes. Twenty dollars each yeah, for a set. set of, mm, set of six. It's twenty dollars for six. Yes, yes. With fixed prices, no negotiation was needed, and we were soon on our way to Mufwi Lodge, where we split into our separate groups, assigned to a number of small push camps for the next three nights. Camps were located deep within the national park itself and took up to two and a half hours to reach, allowing ample time to spot some of the spectacular game in this park. At over 3,500 square miles, the South Luangwa National Park is the largest of the four national parks in the Luangwa Valley. As a self-contained ecosystem, the Luangwa Valley is almost unique among Southern Africa's wildlife regions. Up until the end of the early 1970s, the Luangwa watershed was thought to harbour more than 100,000 elephants and over 5,000 black rhino. Since then, poaching has reduced the elephant population by over 80% and has eliminated all the rhino. Fortunately, the habitat remains intact and other species are thriving. Hi, my name's Jo Bradbeer. I'm the catering manager here at Chamalandi Bush Camp. Uh, we're based on the banks of the Luanga River, uh, two and a half hours south of Mfui Lodge. We have three chalets, um, so we accommodate six people, and uh, we're open from the beginning of June to the end of October, so five months of the year. During the off-season, the bush camps are stripped down to the bare dirt to prevent theft and any possibility of poachers using the facilities. Each of the bush camps are of different design, but held on average only six guests at one time. Spread out from one another and distanced by a 30-minute Land Rover ride, only enhanced the feeling that you were deep in the bush in a very private world.
Connie, this is inside of Wayne's Drive. And he headed out, radio, radio, back. If you had not tasted the delights that were served up at mealtimes, you could never have imagined being able to prepare such feasts and provide such luxurious amenities under these meagre conditions. It's called a Rhodesian boiler, and all it is is a 44-gallon drum on its side with a little bit of fire underneath. And you won't get a hotter shower anywhere else in the world, I can guarantee it. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Though we spent a lot of our time on game drives, what the region is best known for is its walking safaris, as there are very few places where this is a safe possibility. You can feel more connected when you actually walk the land, so this was a special part of our experience in Luangqua. This was a hippo, and then these, these good molars here to, to grind up the food. So they, they have a movement like that with the head plucking the grass as it goes backwards and forwards like that, and then it gets pushed in onto the molars to be ground down. They actually have two incisors, long incisors like that. So the canines grow out here, and the incisors go straight forward. And they can be, on a big hippo, those incisors can be that long. And, and it's thought that it's, it's partly used, like the canines, for fighting. And there's a suggestion that maybe they can use those incisors um, to dig soil if they need to get a, some nutrients from the soil, depending on where they live. 